Good evening, everybody. Call to order the May 2nd, 2023 regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Board. Seth, may we have a roll call? Uh, yes, sir. Sonia um, Ruzza? Here. Uh, Marjorie John? Here. Uh, Colin Aaron? Here. Brian Jefferson? Here. Brandon Lee? Here. Rusty Ingram? Here. Mark Lowry? Here. Yeah. And he's back. Pat Murray is attending uh, my meeting. Okay. Now we have four. Okay. okay. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. <clears throat> so, our first item of business is election of a new board of chair. Um, I'm told that our previous board chair has, uh, select, has accepted a position with the city, and so that uh, rules him out of eligibility for serving on the Plan and Zone Board. So at this time, I will open the floor to nominations, and, and I guess I'll get us kicked off, and I'll nominate Brad Jeffries to serve as chair. Any other nominations? I nominate Marjorie. Marjorie Good. <laughs> All right. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Margie, do you, well, for Brad, do you accept the nomination? Uh, sure. Okay, okay. Margie? No. No? <laughs> you decline. Thank you, though. All right. Okay, so any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, this uh, time I'll... I'll second that. Okay. All right, so we have a nomination and a second for Brad. So at this time, I will um, uh, entertain a vote for Brad Jeffries. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. motion passes. Brad is our new chair. Um, and I'll, I'll run the meeting tonight if uh, if that's okay with the new chair. Well, your voice was... You want to do it? Well, I'm right here. I got the gavel, so I may as well do it. This is my parting shot on my way out of the board. Uh, so our next item of business is approval of minutes. So the first set of minutes that we have before us is the March 1, 2022. Um, doing a little housekeeping, cleaning up some past minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review those? And are there any revisions or corrections? Hearing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> Hearing no uh, revisions or uh, corrections, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to accept the minutes as both. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor of approval of the March 1, 2022 minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Those minutes are approved. I have to do that because we were going to do I'll make sure I sign these before I leave. So. Okay, the next uh, set of minutes that we have um, is from our March 7th, 2023 uh, meeting. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review those minutes? Any corrections or revisions? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Oh, I move that we uh, accept the March 7th uh, minutes. Okay, we have a motion. And we have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, those minutes are approved as well. <clears throat> okay, our first item of new business is introduction of a new PNZ member. Mr. Rusty Ingram. Hello, everybody. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Hey, Rusty, turn your thing around so I can see you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came um, to be on the board? Um, my wife and I have lived here for a little over two and a half years. We moved from California. Mm -hmm. I'm originally from Virginia, uh, born and raised in Virginia, and uh, came back to the East Coast after getting tired of California. Um, my wife is originally from California, but decided she wanted to move to the East Coast. And my sister also lives in town, so it's a family affair. Um, and um, I know Rick Prill very well. Uh, he's my neighbor. So um, actually, I asked him if I could be nominated. And so he put me forward for the appointment. 
and it was approved. Excellent. Awesome. Welcome. What is your task? What did you do? Um, I'm an electrical engineer by education, and I've done tremendous amounts of things in project management, sales, marketing, business development, small business, lots of things. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay, our next item of new business is John <clears throat> G. Thomas, on behalf of D.R. Horton Incorporated, is requesting final subdivision plan approval for Bayberry Park Subdivision Phase 3, a 51 lot residential development. <clears throat> this phase of the development is located on approximately 19.64 acres and is in the residential R8 district. The site is located off Bayberry Park Drive and Cinnamon Run in the Carolina Colors Community. Uh, Seth, would you like to give us the staff review? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, as Mr. Layton stated, this, this project is in, <coughs> is in the southern end of the Carolina Colors uh, development. It's, a close up. it's uh, the extension of Bayberry Park Drive and uh, Cinnamon Run. So the, the footprint is actually as clear area right here. We've got the subdivision map. It is in compliance with it came before the board in uh, general plan in 2021. Uh, the the map um, makes, makes all the legal requirements for final subdivision plan approval. Uh, the staff recommends subdivision plan approval of Bayberry Park Phase 3 pending a performance bond being accepted by the city attorney. The engineer's firm has been working with um, the city attorney's office getting uh, put together, we don't have it yet. So, what we recommend would be um, conditional approval. We just don't report the mylar until such time that a common and proper map has been accepted by the city attorney's office. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, at this time, I'll open it up for questions from the board. I'm watching, I don't want any more people moving in the car. <laughs> That's Fair the way they kicked off playing Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what they're going for. What did you say? I didn't hear you a while ago, Seth. The city does, it hasn't accepted the map. Is that what you said? The bond. No, I'm saying the bond hasn't been. Performance was. Well. For you. It's in the packet. It's a uh, bond that amounts to $700,000. And change. So I know I'm new, but I had a couple of questions. <laughs> um, in a subdivision like this, I noticed from the map that there are eight foot side setbacks. Is that to code? Is that normal? Is that what you guys typically, is that part of the ordinance? Well, previously, the district requirements. Yeah. Yeah, such as the R8 zoning district would have the in, um, yeah, so that would be the setbacks for the R8 Okay. And then I noticed between, in the middle of lots 93 through 112, which are the ones in the middle, there's a drainage easement at the back of the home, at the back of each of the lots. Where did that water go? And I apologize, I'm new to the area, new to how drainage works in this part of the country. So I know how it works in California. I've built homes and stuff. Yeah, Bob, you know anything here from the engineering firm that's representing the application? Yes. Can I go up there? Absolutely. Please do. If you would, once you go up, just introduce yourself. I'll go for the record. So I'm Bobby Billingsley, I'm a Thomas engineer. I live around here from Johnny, so uh, out of town. Um, we did not, McKenna Creed did the design of this project. We came in to do the surveying and the planning of it. So we've been on, in on the construction side of it, but not the, the you know, upfront engineering. You know, we're working for the airport. But to answer the question that was asked about drainage, so there's a drainage uh, a catch basin in the, in the box right here, and this is surface flow down mm -hmm. to that box there. So it's connected to the boxes. The surface will just goes to the box. Right, right. Okay. Um, this one right here is more for future. This box is down here as well. Um, 
there's a swale along this line here there's an easement up there this one here is for utility with the water line and some storm drain there okay thank you any other questions yeah i have a question i'll uh, peruse you through the uh, document and it states that the subdivision improvement uh, have not been completed and the owner has elected to provide a guarantee in lieu. Now right. what do we talk about here? I mean, that's, that's the that's the bottom. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they have been, it has been satisfied? Not yet. But they submit this estimate that we, we send this estimate to public works mm -hmm. and they go over it and make sure all the numbers look good. Yeah. 120%. Yeah, I see that. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Of the total, so the total improvement is 583,000. So 120% of that would be 700,000. Okay. <coughs> They're going to turn in a legal document that says that they have to um, put all the improvements in to our standards, or they forfeit this amount of money, so that the city can put them in if they were to the fault. Okay. Now, can we, uh, can we okay. move to accept this? Yep. Contingent upon uh, approval of bond. That is correct. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none, uh, this time I'll entertain a motion. Uh, but just a reminder so this is um, not a recommendation to the Board of Aldermen. This is a final approval with this board. And um, if it's a recommendation for uh, approval, it needs to include the contingency of the approval of well, so well, I would like to move that. Move that we approve it on the, on the contingency that uh, the bond is accepted by the state. Okay, we have a motion. I'll, I'll second. second. I have a couple of seconds. <coughs> so all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, so our next item of new business is a discussion item. And it says initial zoning for previously annexed parcels. And so, Seth, I presume you've got some prepared yes, for us. Over the last few years, staff has determined that the several parcels within the city limits that did not receive an initial, <coughs> initial zoning at the time of annexation. Um, there's 29 of these all together. Three are DFT owned parcels and three are um, county owned. So there's um, three main areas. We've got three, four parcels down here around Carolina Colors. Um, we've got several that are down adjacent to the airport. And then we've got four up here off Highway 55 up in the Pleasant Hill area. Um, so we're going to put together uh, sort of a, a mass initial zoning application. That's what we're going to do. You going to do one as a group, or are you going to do them individually? You one think? as a group. Okay. Yeah, and that'll come to this board. Um, and what zones are we thinking? Um, that would be really good to discuss right now, actually, before <laughs> we go through and start working. <laughs> exactly. Um, my Surely, thing, staff has an opinion. R20 up here. This is all R10 down here. Not for sure reason not to do that. These these are these are adjacent to some residential houses here. The, the common zoning down here, C3 or R8. The other thing maybe C uh, R8 right next to the house. It's not really usable land. This is part of. Curve right here between the right of right way. I don't know if And that particular slide is where is that located? <coughs> this is down around Carolina Colors. But the main entrance to Colors. We so is it, but is it right state going to take part of that because of the ins and outs of, of the highway? Yes, yes. Yeah, it seems like C3 would make sense because residential is allowed on, on C3. Um, and that's all ordering C3 there. And I assume that the other parcel that's to the south, that's going to be C3, or that the proposal would be for yeah. C3, that mm -hmm. is right there. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
And on, on the slide, previous slide where you had all the, the lots next to the airport, mm -hmm. so, are, I mean, I know it's R10 at the bottom, but those are mostly, res that's a residential area. That looks more like open space than, are those all houses up there? Uh, from here, it's about, from here, it's not. This is on the individual farm still. It's owned by the airport, you say? I've got a problem. Yeah, you can see, see yeah. part of the, uh, the, the tarmac. Yeah, you can see the runway from the right and up, up on top. So we're kind of embarking on a lot of housekeeping right now, a lot of housekeeping right now. And one of the things that was discovered um, was that these properties were annexed in and did not receive zoning. Of course, the risk being if you're not zoned, you can do whatever you want to on the right. property. It's essentially like you're still zoned in Craven County. Um, that meat, that's everything from a you know meat processing plant to right. a strip club on that property, and we can't stop it. So I had some urgency to make sure, even though some of these are areas where those things probably wouldn't happen because you couldn't meet the other criteria, that we needed to get these color, the right color match in our zoning districts. And so what you're going to see is that's going to write a report for City of Newburgh requested. It's just like a rezoning, z initial zoning application is what we're going to call it. It will have signs posted. It will have the notification sent out when it goes to public hearing. Um, but they're all being processed under like, you know, kind of one case where this is just a cleanup effort for us to do this. You'll see each property, the PID number, the current use of the property, and the proposed zoning. So we'll look more closely to see what's actually, if there's a house yeah. on there, you know, that's going to make sense. If there's a swath of land that looks commercial at the entrance, you know, the DOT property, they already own that. We know what's going to happen there eventually. So we'll use some common sense approach and then get you to weigh in on it and follow it, just like a citizen came in and asked for a rezoning. The weird thing is here, it's just there's three different areas of the city that, that need that zoning put on there. Do we know how many of the parcels are not publicly owned, not, not city most or of them, state? Well, most of them are privately owned, right? Except yes, for some thing. DOT ones. Okay. Yeah, so... There's 29 and there's three that are on the, there's six that are publicly on the Okay. 23. So, where during the process does the property owner get their input? Is that We are going to proactively send them out a notification uh, before your next meeting. Okay. And it probably even invite them to come here and comment if they'd like, because they may be a little bit confused, quite honestly. Sure. And I'd rather catch them at this meeting yeah. than at a public hearing where I've never had zoning before, <laughs> I don't understand, and know it's annexed. Whatever, you know, you hear yeah. it all, like yeah. you watch some of those sometimes. So we're going to just be a little proactive about that. Send them a courtesy letter. Look, this process, invite them to this meeting if they'd like to come next month. And then, and then they'll get the required letter also when it goes out. Okay. As will everybody within how many feet? Uh, 100. 100. So, yeah. yeah, all those neighbors too. So there may be some people just with curious questions to come out. And, and we expect that because this is a little, I mean, you see this in, in counties a lot. You don't see it so much uh, in municipalities. So. Uh, you're also speaking of cleanup efforts. You're probably going to keep seeing between two and four sets of minutes for a while because we have a big push right now to get those uh, caught up administratively. And so uh, all of our boards have made a, a minutes uh, catch up plan. And so Seth has been doing some extra minutes lately. And then that's the reason behind that. And we recognize that some of you may have not been here to, to weigh in on that, but we still need to. The vote in the you know yep. at least please read them for grammar and accuracy <laughs> there's videos right so the good news is there's always a video of that if you need to go back because it's 2023 but by law we still got to set up some kind of minutes so you'll see some some very vanilla minutes coming through to, to get that effort finished mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, the state requirement is to show the, the items that the uh one that made the motions and what the motions were that's right and this for some reason do verbatim when you type out every single word. We need to discuss moving the meeting to a, a different venue if you're going to invite people to come and see what's going on. Because well, people are always invited to attend these I meetings. I know, but they may actually come this time. <laughs> oh, I, I do envision. I, I hope they do. I mean, you know, 
Do you expect the people like work. that as part of the sense of habit somewhere where you have more chairs? A lot of times, most people, you know, they give us a call and they're like, what is this about? Right. And then they, but you've always got a couple that want to come back. So. Sure. Which is just fine. Um, I don't know that this is a big enough deal to call a special meeting. Right? What are you thinking? If you're going to change your location, any deviation in your meeting location can qualify as a special meeting. Um, City Hall often is used because of its space. Um, when we expect a large public turnout. So if that's something that you want to do preemptively, you can make a motion tonight moving your meeting location um, to that venue. However, um, it, it may be prudent to just let staff um, assess how many people they think may come and communicate that all to you, and that way you can move forward with the benefit of that information. Yeah, but if you got too many coming in, you <coughs> have to limit of moving it to the next loop down to town. 48 hours notice is what we have to give the public. Mm -hmm. Do we think this is coming before us, our, our next regular meeting set? Is that plan? I hope so. I hope so. Okay. I think we should just keep that in mind. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I, I like your idea. Let's uh, figure it out. If, if we get a lot of feet pushed back, or yeah, a lot of pissed off people, then, then yeah, then we can do it. It's hard to say. Yeah. yeah I can't. Yeah. It's yeah. a long time. I can't always ever predict. But nope. there will be, this is outreach. We don't have to do. I just feel like we should do. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Unless anyone disagrees, I'm, I'm going to have Seth so invite these people to come learn. That's, that's and they the right like, thing to do. Okay. Right. Absolutely. I'd want to know if it was me. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, it's because it's a little, little off. All right. Okay. Any other discussion on, uh, on that plan moving forward? Okay. Hearing none, our next item of new business is a discussion item for downtown parking. And I presume you have something prepared for us for that. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> um, similarly, <laughs> One thing that's been a lot of these historic downtowns have <coughs> limited space. And they were laid out sometimes centuries before the automobile. <coughs> when we get adaptive reuse of buildings downtown, um, change of use for our zoning ordinance would require 10, 15, 25 parking spaces in the case of you know, a large restaurant, for example. It can, be, it can be restricted on how properties can be reused. This area I've got highlighted in green is the central retail core. The um, planning works already has built in where this area is exempt from off-street park regulations. So the staff is going to be um, checking out different ideas of, of potentially um, expanding this area further downtown, some other mechanisms for retaining existing parking. So this is something that's been discussed at the city hall level for a few years. We're going to bring that for the recommendation of the next month. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So, okay. Um, we are currently looking at how, like all other cities in North Carolina, with historic buildings and things are accommodating their parking. Because I'm going to be quite honest with you. Um, the way they've been issuing zoning approvals in this department for years, I'm, I'm just not on board with. And many times it was just either not given a zoning approval, it was, oh, that's just okay, and nobody went to check the parking or any of the change of use standards, and that's got to stop right now. Um, I, the second I realized that was happening, I stopped it. I, I used the analogy earlier uh, presenting our fee changes in our budget with we used to kind of sell it as a buffet, and now it's got to be an a la carte cafeteria. So you come in, because there's many times you need a zoning permit, you may not need a building permit. The size of your shed might not require a building permit, but it definitely requires setbacks. It definitely um, requires you know, extra mm -hmm. things like that. Size, size check, those types of things. That's the easiest one. Upfits of a commercial building were getting missed a lot. Just because you're in an existing building that's brand new and meets building code doesn't mean you're meeting all the zoning requirements. Um, and, and that's all connected to building code, et cetera. And that further is exacerbated down here when you have the historic district on top of these things and sometimes flood, flood zones on top of things. There's a lot of things that need to be checked. And so we're just separating those steps out a little bit. One of the things that, since we started doing this, is 
well, how are we calculating the parking? Because historically, they've been kind of been, oh, it's kind of economic development. This is great. Change the use to whatever. But you've got to check that parking. It's zoning law that you have a certain amount of parking spaces per use. So we're not the only people in the world with this problem, right? We, we, we uh, brainstormed on this the other day, looking around. The easiest way to accommodate it is um, because of the fact there is on-street parking available, because of the, sh the fact we have public parking lots and the bare lots down there, this is workable, but it needs to be put in writing uh, for this solution. And one of those ways to do that is to kind of waive the direct, and it's happening in, in some areas already. We're going to bring you some <coughs> options of where this line should be drawn for you to weigh in on it and make that recommendation. And there's different ways to do this with proximities to public <coughs> spaces. There's ways to just weave it all together. I'm going to give you a couple of options of looking, looking at where other places have written out similar codes. And uh, this, may not, this may not happen in one meeting, but we're going to bring you those things and we're going to talk through this because there's pros and cons from the different ways you do this. It could be a little bit political quite honestly, because we're, we're in an area where this gets a lot of attention. But we need to find the solution to this. So Seth has his life easier when somebody's coming in to start a new business downtown. He can say for sure, yes, um, you're in this area where there's way of parking and just check that and move on in the zoning permit or not, or require them to find it somewhere else. It gets very complicated when you start requiring satellite rules and things like that. So I think that's why the initial approach was, well, let's waive this some, some ways. We've got to pay attention. There's some really large parcels down here. We can, I don't believe, like, as a planner, ethically, I can say, oh, let's waive the parking because uh, in some of those really large spaces, it's highly likely it's going to be a hotel or commercial development, and we can't burden the rest of downtown with that parking. Sure. But these businesses that have historically already been a business changing their use, I think that's fair game. So that's where we're, that's what's coming also in addition to the 29 properties missing zoning, more, more cleanup efforts here. Excellent. So, so right now you're talking about making the, 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 the rectangle bigger. Well, you're gonna talk about that, yes. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna facilitate a discussion on where that district should be. We'll show you where it is now. We'll show you some options. We'll show you some of these undeveloped parcels we're concerned will need to have uh, uh, on-site parking, mm -hmm. and we'll we'll recommend a, a map and some text with that. Okay. Yeah. Will it change what's currently there? So no. if someone owns a bed and breakfast, now they have to get parking or don't have to have parking? Will this, this will be um, on or after will take the date it gets adopted at the public hearing okay. and it will become effective standard post that date like we've done or y'all have done many other changes like that. That's the easiest way to legally enforce so it. So if they already have it, they're basically grandfathered kind of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yep. I hate, I hate that term, but, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. They would, they would, uh... So does that go with the, if they sell it, does that go to the new owner? Or does the new owner then have to follow? The, I, the business doesn't change and the ownership right. changes. I think that's fine. I yes. think if they want to change... The change of use is what would trigger the okay. so, Yeah. So that's our, that's kind of our kicker there. And does this contemplate any potential new structures or new parking that would be arranged in downtown? that I know has been discussed. That's going to be part of the conversation. conversation. That will be green, part of the conversation. The green box that you see is the law as it exists in this moment. Right. Okay. Because I know that there have been parking structures outside that green box that have been proposed either to the city or to the county, or at least to the county. <coughs> and I, I don't know where that stands. So I don't know if that plays into it. It's a good thing to discuss. Maybe just ask this question. So the parking uh, downtown, are they going to limit how long you can park? So are they going to keep it for two hours like me? Right. So we're very unique also. And most places that have parking downtown charge for it, right? right. Like, like you go to Asheville or Wilmington, you're walking up to a kiosk, you're swiping your credit card, you're punching in the space that you're in, and it's five bucks an hour or whatever. It's pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. And we're not... We're not doing that. Um, so I think that's the trade-off between limiting the time and charging. I don't think there's an interest in charging 
Right, and that's not, and that's not for us to decide. Board, right? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it has been, been discussed at the board. We're going to have to look at this uh, from the point of view of zoning, right? Because so right, if you want to facilitate a thriving right. downtown, this is not, you know, we use the example, like when Atlanta Beach started to charge for parking, it was, the economy was really bad, and it was, we got to pay for the lifeguard somehow. Town residents aren't parking in the circle. People that are visiting are parking in the circle. That was the equitable way to say this is how we'll continue yeah. our lifeguard service. We're not. That makes sense. But we're not really, you know, needing to minus trash pickup and things from from that, which is more nominal than, than paying extra salaries. But <coughs> marinate on some of these things because these are good discussion points. Mm -hmm. The, uh, that's kind of why I asked to introduce them today. If you're just down there thinking, well, what about this? What about this? Be thinking on those things. This uh, doesn't have to be a completely structured conversation right. next time, but we need to start having it because we're ready to clean this up. Well, I've, I've seen some conversations at the city level about parking because there are folks that talk about the fact that there is a lot of parking in downtown Newburn, but if you look at what's there, a lot of it is private parking. It's not public parking. And so is it enough in certain areas? And so it's some, people that, some people don't realize where there is public parking. That's, That's right. right. Some people it's don't realize. Right. There's, there's right. about, and that may be an outreach campaign the right. city needs to do it in social media blasts, things like that. But there's over 600 public, non-lease public available to anyone for two hour spaces down there, which is very high for that amount yeah. of real estate. That's a lot. So we just need to figure out the way to to write it into the code. So have y'all discussed about installing meters? That's out of the purview of a, a, a sort of okay. an advisory board and staff. But I, I don't I don't think that's a conversation the city's interested in having right now. But we did no, we don't work. ask these questions. I live in New York and I know it is talking is crazy. Newburn used to charge for parking. And there really? used to be meters in downtown Newburn. Really? Oh, I'm a native. Yeah. So yes, you got out and put your money in. It was a quarter at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, there was meters. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, is it Beaufort who um, uses theirs only during the peak season to pay for yes. a lot of stuff? Yes. They made uh, a lot of money. has the same kiosks that uh, actually mm -hmm. yes. Let me ask another question. If you have to two hours at time when you park downtown, what do they do? They give you a ticket for how much? I think it's 25 bucks. 25 dollars. I think the first offense is a warning. Correct. That is correct. And then thereafter, you can be cited for $25. Okay. $25. Mm -hmm. Ooh, if I'm not mistaken. But there, there is a fee associated with it. I, I, I pay <laughs> Shoot, my boss gets long winded and I'm down there like two hours and would have been like looking out the window like, yeah, there's no pass there. Yeah. I guess uh, one more thing, if you don't mind, uh, we did uh, in our, we haven't gotten here, I've been in a budget meeting all day today and going back tomorrow, but we requested funds to start a complete rewrite of our land use ordinance for the city of Newburn. It is a massive, massive, massive project. It's long overdue. Um, it needs to be done to be consistent with the state statutes, and it's going to be a multi-year project. And this is highly likely the board that's going to end up serving as the advisory board for this um, this project. I mean, by law, you make recommendations to the board of aldermen, but if we are budgeted the the money to this is a consultant project this is not a, a, this needs a professional code writer sure. um, lawsuits are, are won and lost litigation all the time uh, on these codes now and that's just the world that we live in so it's a little bit more than just this is what we think would be great in new Bern. It, it needs to be done really well it all needs to work together it needs to be current codes mm -hmm. like this are cross-referenced mm -hmm. they're easy to use they're very easy to amend, and that's just not where we find ourselves using ours right now. And it's just, it needs to be modernized. There's so many missing definitions and land uses that have come about in the last, I'd even say, 40 years that need to be accommodated in here. And it needs to be cleaned up for, from where it's been kind of piecemeal um, amended just, just for decades. These things have a life cycle of 10 years. It, ours has never had a complete overhaul, and um, it's kind of a, a number one priority for us to operate better. And I think it's an investment in customer service because it's going to be much, much, much easier to use when it's done. 
but if you paint a, a scenario of this is where we are and this is where we want to be, there's a whole lot of work in there and there's going to be a whole lot of political conversations too. So I'm just the bearer of good news tonight. <laughs> I do feel like that's exciting they, stuff. They um they see the value when they were having some work sessions, the elected <coughs> officials of needing uh, development regulations with a little bit more teeth. We have a lot of plans in the city of New Bern. Right. Plans are, are dreams, ordinances are laws, and so some of those some of the good planning work that's been done needs to be brought in and somehow overlaid in, in an ordinance yes. where it's law. We're just also unique in that every single land development code is in one place, and so I'm going to have the fun challenge of deciding, do we want to separate this into several different ordinances, kind of remove building code, step HPC regulations out? They all work together, but at some point in time, to get a good plan of where, where we're going, um, I think we're going to have to look at zoning and zoning definitions and regulations first. And then maybe even as a group, we have a conversation on what is the logical way to do this next. And, and Jamie sees some of the challenges that we're having using with our really old ordinances. It can probably help weigh in uh, professionally on which parts are, are most important to knock out first, too. But another thing to be marinating on, um, just while you're out and about, is it's, it's a really big project. It's going to be something we can be really proud of when we're done with it. Um, a tangible, huge accomplishment. But um, I did the first UDO in Atlanta Beach. I just finished uh, all four separated ordinances in Onslow County. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot of work. But this is where we get to put in new fresh policies and things and decide, okay, in this zoning district, maybe we should be looking at this different and we'll be looking at how they do things in different places. That's where it's really good to have a mix of people who have lived all over and people that have been here forever because you, you have to find that, that balance of this is what makes Newburn Newburn, but I've seen this work really great somewhere else. Right. So. Has the money been appropriated by the Board of Aldermen yet to do this? Nope. We, uh, I, I, I remember that discussion yeah. a couple of meetings ago. So we all get to that conversation tomorrow. Of course, they will they'll have, they'll call for a budget hearing really soon. I do think that there is the momentum behind this project uh, that it will will stay in um, and get in the, in the adopted budget. Um, and then once you do a project like this, you have to circle back and usually update your land use plan again. And it because it all it's sure. all supposed to work together, and then. It's also going to come with a really good deep dive look at our zoning map, which is always a political fire. So, so get excited. Um, Buckle up, folks. Like fun. So, um, how does this board help you, i.e., you, the city, do that? It, 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 you did it down in Onslow County. Yeah. What, so, so what's what going to happen is... Um, you know, we've got a whole bunch of state law changes, and that's where we're gonna we're gonna start with because the state change not only references to these policies in in the state statutes, but there's a whole lot of content that changed too. And actually, for the last few years, we're starting to see how it's played out, and we'll probably start seeing some modifications to that. But what will happen is, um, if that money gets appropriated, we will put out a request for qualifications um, and call in. A, review those, call in some firms, interview them. It's important to me to have one that's not a planning firm that's not just good at making plans, but is good at code writing. Um, so that's the way I like to lean. I like black and white ordinances. I like him to be able to say, you need 10 parking spaces. This is where it says it is black and white. That's the kind of product that, that I'm looking for. There's a lot of ambiguity in our codes right now. That needs to go. It, it's, it's too dangerous and hard to use. So once that happens, um, typically jurisdictions will either appoint a committee or they will just default to the planning or planning and zoning board to serve as that committee. I think in our case, uh, it would be completely appropriate that we use you all. You're already here. You're familiar with land use issues. Why not? Um, and so I would advocate for that rather than starting an additional committee. New Bern has plenty of committees, I don't think. We need another one, and honestly, if they were drawing and looking for volunteers to do that, they'd probably be 
draw it on, I'll leave it out. And then we would bring the consultant in and I asked them to have a kickoff meeting. And they would say, this is our typical process. I would have already sat down and stuff and probably um, our attorneys as well and talk through, these are our big issues and this is what we want to fix first. And they'd probably come down and we'd have a lengthy work session about the topics I have pre-introduced them and they would kind of pick all your brains and you have brainstorming session. And you kind of tick off um, topics like that and codes that you need a few at a time and then they come back, they take that information, they go home, they draft it up. Uh, however many we ask at a time, this will be very piecemeal for us because there's so much to do. That would be the, the way I'd advocate for it. Um, we come back and we like review what has been presented to us and then send them back with that feedback and you just take it off like that. And then, of course, there'd be uh, public outreach and public hearings that would be needed at the end. And then ultimately what would happen is we would do a repeal and replace uh, where all the codes that we've replaced get struck out of our, our current code and a beauty code, which is probably where you go to look at it. And then an ordinance is, I, like, we write up an ordinance adopting the new land use ordinance and that's what they would adopt. So that's, in a nutshell, me talking very fast, the process we have to look forward to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to the same process we did when we went through the other a year yeah. ago. Similar to the amendment process. Right. Yeah. Except but a much, old, right. we're not worrying about what's there. That's right. And I think we need to take that approach, honestly. I think we need to <laughs> honestly say, this is what we want to look like, and this is how we're going to get there. And the, the codes that apply out in West New Bern are not the uh, same codes that need to apply down here. Mm -hmm. And we can make them nice and neat and clean and well written and grow from there rather than kind of the mumbo jumbo that we got now. And and all, I'm not dissing what we have right now. This happens everywhere. It's just not usually allowed to happen for this long. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really, really tight. We've got too many questions going on and the boundaries moving out. The state keeps talking about we might not even have ETJs at some point. These are all things that we need to look at and, and where, where do we want the boundary to do? Where, as, uh, as an advisory board on land use, do we think is appropriate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have one quick thing. Hearing all of that, does the board have any concerns, questions, comments on doing that amount of work as you sit? Because it sounds like it's going to be a lot of work on it. Mm -hmm. okay. a, lot, a lot of it's right. sh sharing your ideas yeah. and thoughts and feelings and giving that feedback to somebody that's going to take their and put it together. If I guess I'm asking you, does anybody not if want it's, to If it's an over commitment <laughs> before we start that, that, this. That was, that was where I was driving. And I probably guess if we get the money, it will probably take until October or November to actually okay. get this started. Because right. it takes time to look at those consultants, get a contract signed, all, all those kinds of things. But we'll worry about that then. Um, and probably as a chairperson, I may even bring you in when I'm talking to the consultants to make sure it's somebody that he feels a good fit to work with this board. Yeah, it's a very good idea. All right. That ends our new business. Do we have anything else we'd like to discuss? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion. Um, then we have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.